How do you think people will take this socially and economically? Do you think that they are accepting this type of change? Well, I think that we are a society that has been mollycoddled for too long, right? We have been, uh, we have been kind of educated to be dependent. Right, we wait for the World Bank to bail us out. We wait for the IMF to bail us out. We wait for the government sub subsidies. Now we have a fuel crisis, uh, and um, we don't uh, pause to think that you know fuel has been subsidized for for so many years. And it's not only the poor who are subsidized; it's the very rich people who could afford to subsidize. Right, so. Uh, in a sense, there is that issue. You wait till the 500, 5,000 rupee, uh, the padu malla, whatever comes, or the, or the handout. But then, uh, when you know that uh, you, uh, uh, your incomes have gone down, right, and you, your, your purchasing capacity obviously has, uh, has declined, when you know that uh, you can't. Uh, no one is giving you any, any assurances that the state will move in and distribute food. Where is the food to distribute? Because there is a, a certain shortage. It doesn't look like as though you know people are like lining up to uh, bring uh, ships of food to Sri Lanka. We don't see, but the, there's a there's a global crisis going on. Everyone is we, we see only Sri Lanka because that's what that's where we are. But all these countries have these problems, and they are also thinking about you know doing something for their people into the future. Uh, so whether we like it or not, who likes to dig the earth? Someone might ask, right? But until you start it, you won't, uh, you might not, uh, but once you start doing something, you get used to it and there's fulfillment. We saw this during the COVID-related lockdowns the last two years. They were stuck at home. They did not know, they, they didn't have anything to do. They couldn't go anywhere. So they, they started growing things. Uh, sometimes uh, you know, I tell people that you know, I spend more time mm, uh, in the garden than inside the house because uh, I live uh, with, uh, with uh, two daughters and my wife and they, are, they, they, they have their own worlds, you know. Uh, and my daughters are too old to have interesting conversations with me, so I have conversations with the birds and the squirrels <laughs> and the plants. But I, uh, your question. Uh, we, it's not something that we need to relearn. It's something we already know, and uh, you know, if and desperate situation calls for desperate uh, measures. What are you going to do if you know you, you can't? You can't buy enough food. There is no food to buy. What are you going to do? Right? At some level, you will start thinking. Okay, there's so many, so much of course, dell, amber, amberella, all these things which we have just not really harvested. We look around and we say, oh, I never planted tebu, but there's tebu growing, right? I never planted that, but that is also growing. Uh, so you look around and you suddenly find that you have the eyes to recognize the food that you have not grown, but because we are such a, uh, you know, we are an island that is so blessed in so many ways, there's stuff. But we have been used we have been taught and we have got uh, into a food culture where we look for carrot, uh, uh, cabbage, beetroot, leeks, that kind of thing. It's, it's really, at some level it's funny that we are a net fruit importing country, right? What do we see as fruit? We see apples, oranges and grapes as fruits, right? Now, we don't realize that we have so many varieties of plantains. Right, you know, uh, you name it. There's so much food, but we don't see the food, even if we have it. And uh, but now we have not only got to see the food, but we have to see the food that is not there, plant it. And there are short term. So you can grow healthy things like, uh, say, winged bean, dambala, uh, you know, makara, uh, uh, bandaka. You know all these things. You know all the all the malung types, the palavar. All those things we can grow, even in an urban setting. Now there may be problems in you know very poor say, communities, uh, slum shanty kind of uh, low income, where there's space problem. But there also you can have a couple of plants. But then there there can there is a concept called community uh, farming. There there is always space that is common for now. People don't talk about common property. People talk about private property and public property. But there's also common property. Japan developed on common property, right? So 
common spaces, marginal spaces, which we didn't think we could grow food on. We can grow food on. Right? There are you know, side box on the side, the roundabouts. If, if you really want to find space, you can find